Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up and how to use Google Workspace, which could very well be one of the most powerful tools you can have for your business. I've been using it to manage my businesses for about six years now, and I couldn't imagine running a business without it. So like I said, there's a lot to talk about in this video and two main ways you could set it up. The benefits, of course, are going to be a professional email, so people take you much more seriously, the ability to collaborate with team members, whether that is through Google Apps or, of course, just Google Storage in general, which is really beneficial, managing calendar and meetings, and many more things that I'll show you throughout this video. So starting off, there's two main ways you could set this up. Some people get confused by this, but I will make this as clear as possible. The first way is through Google Workspace themselves, workspace.google.com. I would recommend this if you already have a website and you already have a domain. You will have to connect your domain to this while you're setting it up, but I would not recommend going through this if you don't already have a domain or you don't already have a website. The reason is because if you set up through this and you buy a domain through this, then later you're gonna have to connect that over to your website. So it's much easier in my opinion for any beginners who don't already have a website to start through hosting. It's literally the same price and you can scroll down and see maybe one penny cheaper per month, literally the same price essentially. Then through this, you'll get your domain through Hostinger. It's still setting up Google Workspace, like it's fully like licensed, it's the same exact thing, but your domain will be purchased through Hostinger, which then makes it so much easier down the road to make your website through Hostinger and never have to do the technical side of connecting your domain from one thing to another. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go through Hostinger. I have a link down below to both of these. So just follow along and the rest of the video will be the same. Just this first step is going to be different. Of course, I'll have timestamps. So just skip a little bit ahead if you already have a domain. So there are three plan options. For most beginners, I think business starters is gonna be fine. The main differences are going to be the storage you get, the participants in a video meeting, if you're like, a company of 125, then yeah, it makes sense to go up to the next plan up. And of course, you will have the ability to have appointment booking pages. Really for me, the storage is the main one, the main difference between these. But as this tutorial, I'm just gonna go with the cheapest one, $6 per month, and I will choose this plan right here. By default, it is one month. We can choose if we wanna add more than one. I'm gonna say continue. And by the way, I'll show you how to add extra users later on in the video. And now we can create an account. So I'm gonna use my personal email to sign up for the account here. This is going to be how you manage your account. So I'll enter my email address, enter a password, click on continue. Then of course, enter your billing information. All right, and then once you submit your payment, we can just say get started. So now we can choose our domain that we're gonna be using for this professional email and later someday maybe for our website. So I have a new tab uh, in this link. I'll have down below in the description as well. This is just a kind of a more easy to use domain finder. It's through hosting or still, but it's better than this when you're trying to kind of brainstorm what your domain could be. So let's just say I want to be Karate, Karate Island or the Karate, the Karate Island, and we'll say search. And then it'll tell me like what is available. So the Karate Island.com is available. It's $5 a year for the first year after that $17 a year. So like I said, really not that expensive. You're not going to find that basically any cheaper anywhere else on the internet. But if it's not available for some reason, you can always scroll down and they have other options so like karatezone.org uh, or just scroll down further and they have the same thing, but different endings. So sometimes if .com is not available, .co or .so or .io or whatever, there's plenty of other endings that are still available for a lot of things out there. Hopefully for your business, .com is available. So I'm going to go with the karate, the karate island. Dot com. We'll say next step. We can enter our contact details. Then we can say next step again. And now we can actually choose our username here. So I'm just going to be Mike at the Karate Island. I'm going to paste a password that I made and we'll say finish registration. There we go. And now we have this set up. It'll say right there and we can say continue. If you ever want to change your plan or add users, you'll come back to this page right here. So hpanel.hostinger.com and then go down to emails and you can either get additional accounts for any other users on your team. Don't get additional ones for yourself if you want different usernames because I'll show you how to do that for free later in the video. But if you also want to upgrade your account, maybe you need more storage, you need a better license for that, uh, you can go and upgrade that on the top right there. So we have this. It's active. If I click on it, it'll bring us over to this page and uh, we can then sign in. Just redirects us over to Google. And that's what I really like about Google Workspace is that you're signing into YouTube, you're signing into Gmail, everything else is using this email. So it is effectively a Google account and therefore you can use this for a lot of logins pretty much everywhere, including things that say sign in with Gmail. You can use your Google Workspace email to sign in that way as well. So now we have this. So Mike, say Mike at the karate island.com. We'll say enter and then I can enter my password. 
say next, and that will sign me into Gmail right here. So I can say, I understand, accept terms of service. And that will redirect you over to your Google admin console. So if you ever need to access this in the future, you go to admin.google.com. This is where you change all the settings that you might need to related to your Google workspace. So like I said, once you buy a new license for another user, you can go to admin console here and add another user. So you'll see this popping up on your dashboard, but if it is not there for some reason, on the left side, you click on directory, you click on users, and you can click add new user. Now, if you have another license available, like I said, you have to buy that license like a through Hostinger where we set this up and then you'll be able to add another user here. I only bought one, so we're just gonna set this up using just one user for now. But if you have another user, it's very easy to do. You can either make their password and username for them or you can send them to their personal email, like a little uh, link that they can then set it up themselves. That way they have their own password and you don't know their passwords. For privacy reasons, some employees do prefer that. But looking at myself right here, I want to create what's called an alias. This is a really powerful tool that uh, many people surprisingly don't know about. So if I just click on my name, by the way, to get to this again, you go to directory, you go to users, and then you can click on your name, click on where it lights up blue right there, and you'll be able to make aliases. The way this works is if I am like customer service, if I'm also the sales, if I'm also inbound stuff or press or whatever, all these different e emails that I want to have listed out there. So maybe for press inquiries, contact press at the karate island dot com and then i want that to direct to me i want to be that email without having to buy another account well you do that from the user settings right here so if you see user information we click the little drop down arrow and you'll see alternate email addresses email alias is what they're called i can click on that and say the first one is going to be press at the karate island.com maybe we are also media maybe we're also customer service maybe we are also timeshare at the karate island.com and I can save that. And that way we now have all those alternate email addresses that if somebody emails any of those, it's going to come to us. And if we want to send as those emails, we can also do that. I'll show you how to do that in Gmail in just a second, but you can add as many alternate emails as you want. It's something that I personally do. It's great for creating a lot of different accounts. If you need to have, you know, multiple different accounts set up on other services, uh, it's great for, I mean, free trials, to be honest, if you ever need a new email for that, but most importantly for your business, that's pretty valuable. Now, another thing I'm not going to dive too deep to in this video is going to be groups. If you have a lot of people that need to receive the email, so maybe press needs to go to a bunch of people, you can have groups, you can have group emails right here, and you can create those groups so that whoever needs to is going to have access to those emails. Now, the next step, you might have noticed we haven't actually purchased this domain yet. So we have access to the console, but if you click on any of the apps in the top right, we can't actually go to them because it, we need to verify that we own that domain. So let's go back to the first tab, hosting it right here, and you can go down to domains. We'll go to domain portfolio, or rather get new domain. Either way, you can click on get a new domain. And we want to make sure that we get the karate island Dot com. Search for it right there, $5 for their first year. After that 17, like I said, I'm going to say buy now. You can buy it for one year, two years, whatever. The longer you buy it, they do give you a nice little promo for the first year, but I'm just gonna go for one year because again, this is just a tutorial. We have a card on file so I can complete the payment method. And by the way, if you know you're going to get an, uh, a website, you could actually do that right now. You could get a website and a lot of times it comes with the domain for the first year, but you know, for $10, I'm getting this domain and then I can figure out a website in the future if I ever want to. And it's going to be very easy to use this again within Hostinger because we own that domain. All right. So now we have this domain, by the way, it's important that you go and check your email and, and verify your domain. So there's going to be a link to just accept it. So once you click that link in your email, it should bring you to a page that looks like this. Going back to that other tab, if we check the status, uh, it should turn green. We're good. Uh, the domain is active and now we should be all good to go. So go back to that second tab. And here we have, again, Google Admin Console, so admin.google.com. You should see something that says finish setting up admin console. If you don't see that, it may be up in the top right if you click on the little nine dot array, Google Workspace Setup, but I'm gonna click on it over here. So setting up admin console, we just need to verify that we own this domain. So let's say get started. The domain host is Hostinger, it already knows that. I can say continue. So now follow these steps exactly. This is going to require a little bit of clicking, copying and pasting, but it's really not hard to do. So you can see the first thing, the TXT record. So we wanna see TXT value right here. We're going to copy this, then go back to our domain in Hostinger. So domain overview, you can see right this, right there. Go down to DNS slash name servers. Now we're going to add a record. We're gonna click on the type. This is going to be TXT. We can paste the value and we can add record. First one's done. That's great. Next up, going back to the workspace, we can copy the CNAME record. So first we have name. Let's copy that. Click on a little copy right there. 
we'll go to over to their domain on Hostinger. We can click the drop down, find C name, and then here we can paste the name right there. Don't say add record yet. Go back to the domain setup, click on target. We're going to we're going to copy the target. Go back here. We can now paste the target, paste target, and we can add the record. To make sure you delete the little uh, at symbol before the name. I didn't mean to forget that. Say add record, and now that is also added successfully. So if we go back to the domain setup, we can click this and say confirm. We did that. We'll say confirm. It will take a couple minutes to go and verify that, make sure that you know it's connected. That way you're not just setting up like Mike at Facebook.com without actually owning Facebook. That's what they're trying to do is verify that you actually own that domain. Once you have it, which we do, we're good. We can then say explore Google Workspace. So now we're all set up. If you want to do any of this stuff, I'm usually just skipping through these. I'll show you everything we need to do later on throughout this video. But we have all these apps on here that we can use. We'll talk about that throughout the video, of course. And they give us a little checklist. I'm not too worried about that. On the top right, uh, you can see a little nine dot array. So two things I really want to do here. I want to show you how to set up shared drives. I think they're incredibly valuable, very, very powerful and important. And I want to show you some settings in Gmail. So let's start off by going to Drive. If you click on Drive, uh, or just go to drive.google.com by default you should be getting with the lowest level i think 30 gigabytes of storage the next one up i think it's two gigabytes of or two terabytes of storage per user so that's really quite valuable but if we go to shared drives on the left side right there we can create a shared drive and the way this works is if you have anything else in your google drive say you have uh, you know, a spreadsheet and you want to share it with somebody. Sure, you could share it with them and they have access to it and they can manage it and do stuff like that. But a shared drive is a better way to share a lot of files at once. So I use this with a lot of my video editors. What I do is I upload all of my video files to a shared drive. They have Google Drive downloaded on their desktop or their laptop. So it's much easier to automatically download the files when they're sleeping and I'm working. And then when they're awake and I'm not awake, they already have them downloaded. It's much easier to move the files around their laptop. And it's really just a powerful tool that you can only do with shared drive. So I'm going to say this is maybe like video files it could be the first shared drive. So you make that shared drive and you can choose who's part of it, what the members are, what their access is. So if I want to share it with like Nate at santrellmedia.com. He's not in this organization, but I can still share this with him and he can be a viewer, a commenter, a contributor, meaning he can add and move files or a full blown manager able to manage the people in the settings for this. So a lot of different permissions you can set up, which again, makes it really powerful for sharing files, which most companies are going to have to do. And for even the most basic companies that don't use internet a ton, maybe you are like a restaurant, you could still use this for like training manuals. Maybe you just give people view only access uh, in a folder, all the little training manuals on how to run different machines and stuff like that. So I'm going to cancel this, not share it with Nate. Uh, and we still have our, vi our video files there. That's great. Now, going over to Gmail. Remember how we made those different aliases? Those are different ways people can email us. But if we want to send emails from that as well, we can click on the gear icon. And down here, you can say see all settings. And then from see all settings, you can go to accounts. So we are going to click add another email address. And remember how we made the aliases? So let's go back to that tab. Aliases are right here again. Google or uh, admin.google.com, go to users, click on your user, and then click the drop down for user information. And you'll see the aliases right here. And if you want to add more little pencil icon, we can add as many as we need to, but customer service is the one that I'm going to do right now. So let's go back to that little pop-up window and we can choose the name of this. This can be customer service is the name of who's sending the email customer service. And then the email address is going to be customer service at the karate island.com. Next up, it might send us an email. So if I go back to inbox, actually, I didn't need to do that because it already knows that that email address was correct. But if you accidentally type one in that's incorrect, it'll make you verify the email address. And that's how you know you did it wrong. So now we're able to send an email as Mike or as customer service. So when we go to compose a new email, you can see the little drop down there. I can send it as customer service or I can send it as Mike. So we can choose which one we're doing. And you can also change the settings to by default, always reply from uh, whichever one it came to, or you can go by default, always reply from your primary one, for example, Mike right here. So now the next thing I highly recommend doing is setting up what's called two factor authentication. This allows you to have an extra layer of security when you're signing into your account. So in order to do this, you can click on your account on the top right, go to manage your Google account, and then click on security on the left side. By the way, you can actually do this with all of your Gmail accounts as well. But I think for businesses, it's especially important because you just have much more exposure than most individuals. If we scroll down two two step authentication or two step verification is off, we can turn it on. 
So we can do this either by, uh, you know, receiving text messages. I'm going to do that right now. Then type in your phone number. That's going to be one way. It's going to be text messages. But you could also set this up with Google prompts. So if you have an Android phone, that works. Authenticators, you can get like the Microsoft Authenticator app, the Google Authenticator app. There's a lot of authenticator apps out there. You could use your phone number for texting or it could call you to give you a code. Backup codes are something you print and download and save in like a, a safe somewhere uh, just in case you ever need those codes and of course pass keys and security keys if you have like a yubico key you can plug that in and uh you know just a little uh, you tap the top and that's how you can actually you know do your two-factor for that so i highly recommend that if you have that set up and let's go back to admin admin.google.com and from here what i recommend doing is going down to users so go to directory go to users and then if we just click on any user, it doesn't matter. Let's click on our user right here. We can go to the security tab on the top once it's loads, so security right there. And then you can see two, two step authentication is on. But if I click change security settings right here, it'll bring me over to this. And here we can say one, do you want to allow other employees to have two factor authentication? I usually recommend yes. Do you want to enforce it? Like, do they have to have this? So I usually would say yes. I think that's important for a business. And you can change some settings about how frequently do they have to sign back in? Are they allowed to trust their device and not need two factor every time they sign in and different things like that. So I'll save those settings there. So we have some of the fundamentals set up right now. We have Google Drive. We have our Gmail account. You can sign in on your phone now for all of this stuff as well. One other thing I want to point out besides, of course, you have a lot of other apps on here. Chat is a good way to message. As you can see on the left side, you can message other employees in your company or anybody outside of your company. Kind of a nice way to just have faster communication in instead of email. It also keeps it nice and organized like any other chat you would expect as if you were, you know, texting somebody. But I think it's really important to check out Gemini as well. AI is pretty useful in a lot of situations. Of course, always take it with a grain of salt, but chat with Gemini is kind of a, a cool new feature that is coming to Google Workspace. There's a lot of other workspace features that are starting to utilize Gemini. So you can summarize email, for example, you can summarize documents, you can do a lot of different things that could potentially save you time. And also what I really use it for in inbox, of course, it's not always available. It's rolling out now, but you'll see a little Gemini icon towards the top as you click on that and you can ask it questions about emails that you already received and it will find certain things. So you could say, what is my confirmation code for the hotel? It'll find the email. It'll tell you what the confirmation code is. Again, something that is rolling out Gemini for business. Many businesses like this one right here doesn't actually have it yet, but in the future, I'm sure you will be seeing that. All right, so I think that's a pretty comprehensive tutorial on how to set up Google Workspace, how to do some, some pretty important settings. Google gave us this little checklist here. We pretty much did everything on there. If you ever wanted to customize anything else, like I said, Google Admin Console is your best friend here. So again, if you wanna change your name or add a profile picture. You can do all of that in the user customization settings down here, adding aliases, any other settings like that. So if you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike from Central Media, and we'll see you in the next video, which maybe is how to make a website. I'd probably recommend that one next. And uh, you can use Hostinger, super easy to do, and also extremely affordable.